On a sunny summer morning in 1998, residents of Chesapeake Bay started to get ready for their day. But something was off. They crinkled their noses at the sickly smell permeating their homes. Not knowing where it came from, they searched their pantries for rotten food or dead mice. As soon as they stepped outside to catch a whiff of fresh air, a wave of rot wafted over them. In the bay, thousands of silvery, shining bodies blanketed the water. The sky was feathered white and rising with cackling bowls. The people of Chesapeake Bay experienced a fish kill caused by an algae bloom that sucked up all the oxygen from the water. Fish kills continue to happen more and more often in the bay. Why? Well, one of the major causes of this frequent Armageddon is chicken food. The algae loves the plentiful phosphorus contained within the manure. And Maryland has lots of chickens in barns that have barely regulated sanitary conditions. Currently, farms in Maryland raise and kill 300 million chickens a year who produce 600 million tons of manure a year. Chicken manure contains phosphorus. While phosphorus is a useful element in fertilizer, when over applied to crop fields, it can run off and cause algae blooms. In 2019, over half of poultry farms in Maryland self-reported dumping illegal levels of manure on crop fields. No penalties or fines were issued for this, though. Furthermore, 84% of farms failed their initial general sanitary inspection. Two-thirds of them between 2018 and 2020 violated regulations through M Satisfactory Manure Management. For example, leaving piles of chicken manure right next to the water. The total fines handed out each year are less than $10,000, even though the Maryland poultry industry makes $6.5 billion a year. This lax treatment of factory farms has resulted in algae blooms across the eastern shore of Maryland, the water quality of which has remained over the safe pollutant levels defined by the state for the past couple of decades. The state departments barely enforce their regulations while the government gives these farms subsidies. This costs public health and coastal ecosystems. This lack of action and even support is mirrored by states and countries across the globe. There must be a change. Phosphorus is not the only polluter in chicken manure. Chicken poop is especially high in nitrogen and ammonia. When the Sierra Club sued Tyson Chicken for pollution, the lawsuit was settled for a study which found out that just two chicken factories in Kentucky emitted over 10 tons of ammonia within one year. Ammonia can cause waterway acidification, which directly harms carbonate organisms like clams and corals, and reduces the ability of some fish to sense predators. This alters and harms ecosystems. 50% of worldwide acidification is caused by animal agriculture in general. Not only does manure fertilizer pollute, Many of the plant crops that are fed to animals use synthetic fertilizers, which are the biggest cause of dead zones in the ocean. Industrial farming is the worst culprit of water pollution in the U.S. Currently, almost half of the United States rivers are polluted. And every year, livestock creates 2.7 trillion pounds of manure. That's 31 tons per second. Each farm can produce 2,800 to 1.6 million tons of manure a year, the large ones making more waste than large cities. Together, all U.S. animal farms are estimated to produce 3 to 20 times the amount of waste as all humans in America. 98% of pigs in the U.S. live on factory farms. In these operations, pigs are kept on flat floors and their poop drops into a trough under the building's floor. The trough is periodically flushed in what is euphemistically dubbed a lagoon. Lagoons are where most animal manure is stored, and they often leak. When lagoons are full, or if it is time to empty them, farmers opt to spray the manure onto fields, often overloading the soil so that it also leaks nitrates, pharmaceuticals, heavy metals, and bacteria-infested fecal matter into waterways. Excess nitrogen also produced by chickens can cause a myriad of health problems, including blue baby syndrome. Manure also contains harmful pathogens like E. coli. When manure is sprayed onto fields, it often emits deleterious particles of ammonia and nitrous oxide. 
children living around factory farms have a higher rate of breathing problems like asthma. Since there are a lot of insects like flies attracted to farms, there is a higher chance of a disease being spread from the livestock to humans as well. As you'd expect, people living in communities near these poop plants and factory farms have a lower life expectancy in general, even when adjusted for socioeconomic factors. And since nobody wants to work in these facilities, they are disproportionately built in oppressed and underemployed communities. A different way of disposing of manure comes in an integrated pig and fish farm. An innovative way to minimize pig farm waste is by feeding that waste to fish that people will eat. Pig poo has lots of nasty stuff in it that can bioaccumulate in the fish. But what if I told you that this gross method was more environmentally friendly than feeding the fish fish food? What's so bad about the food we feed farmed fish? Well, every year, a fifth of the world's wild-caught fish are processed into fish meal and fish oil, 70% of which is fed to farmed fish. Up to five pounds of wild-caught fish are needed to produce just one pound of salmon or bass meat. This inefficiency, combined with the rising demand for fish meat, has caused massive overfishing of essential species like sardines. Around 50% of the world's fish supply comes from factory farms. Fish farming also degrades the surrounding soil quality, making it hypersaline and useless to grow any crops. Like terrestrial farms, many chemicals are emitted by fish farms like fertilizers, pesticides, and antibiotics. Salmon tightly confined in these factory farms are often infested by sea lice. These insects literally eat the fish alive and they can spread to wild fish, decimating local populations. Fish farming doesn't benefit wild fish and ecosystems. It contributes to the decline towards extinction of sunfish species and the destruction of habitat. Catching wild fish isn't great either. Fishing gear is one of the biggest causes of plastic pollution in the ocean. Over 640,000 tons of fishing gear is discarded each year. Up to 70% of all ocean macroplastics are related to fishing. Fishing is also incredibly wasteful. Up to 40% of all fish caught, 63 billion pounds, is bycatch and is just discarded. From the info I've provided so far, you may think only the big commercial operations are only to blame. But it turns out that an estimated 12% of wild-caught fish are from recreational fishing. Recreational fishing impacts ecosystems as well, with lead sinkers causing water bird death and the vegetation trampling done by anglers carming flora. Massive amounts of fish are caught at the expense of ecosystems, only for almost half of them to be thrown away. So, chicken poop kills oceans, along with meat, dairy, aquaculture, and fishing. In a survey by Cargill, 44% of Americans and British people said they have started to eat more fish due to health and concern with food sustainability. Eating fish is not the solution to the harm done by animal agriculture. Animal agriculture causes a cycle of pollution and ecosystem destruction within our waterways. Even recreational fishing impacts ecosystems. In order to stop the destruction of waterway and oceanic ecosystems and disproportionate impact of factory farms on poor communities, the demand for animal products must fall. Maybe you can pray for a technological lab meat revolution to fix everything sometime in the future, but right now, boycotting the meat, dairy, and egg industries is one of the best ways to stop animal ag from continuing to deceive people and destroy nature.